Good morning to us all, Life Church family, and good morning to you all, our friends who view online and join with us every Sundays in our worship time. We welcome you in the name of Jesus, and we pray that you will enjoy our service together this morning. Let us open in a prayer. Lord, I thank you for you are a God who created the heavens and the earth. Thank you that you are a God who created us for your glory. Thank you, Holy Spirit, that you are with us. You are a friend. You are a counselor. You are our advocate. You are the one who is personally with each of us. Thank you for bringing us this far. And we pray that you would be with us this morning as we worship together. Bless our friends who are viewing online, our families of Life Church, as we worship together this morning, that you would be glorified. In Jesus' mighty and matchless name we pray. Amen.
Greetings to you all, to you, our online viewers, and our very own Life Church family. Hallelujah. We are indeed living in a very interesting time. As we look around, you see things are changing. This has given us a time or a need to be able to raise our awareness and expectation. Today, I will be sharing from receiving God's power. As the famous scripture taken from Acts chapter 1 verse 8 reads, But you will receive the power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in all Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. And to start, I'd like to ask a question, and please give it a serious consideration when you are presenting your answer. The question goes, if you have to forego the celebration of Christmas, Easter Friday, Resurrection Sunday, or Pentecost, which one would, you be, the, would be the least necessary or unimportant to you? Take your time in answering and have it on the side as we proceed. Majority would have a tough time picturing a year without Christmas or Good Friday and Easter Monday. And most Christians say that Pentecost is unimportant. But I must stress to us this morning that without Pentecost, there is no reason to celebrate the other three. They would have, we would have no um, Good Friday if there was no advent of Christ coming during Christmas. And Good Friday would be a meaningless sacrifice if there was no resurrection. Therefore, Pentecost enables the gift of faith, which we can know that the birth, the death, and the resurrection of Christ are for us. Jesus was not finished when he rose from the dead and ascended to be glorified. He came back to give the greatest gift of all, the gift of his own spirit to live in us. And it is with an exciting reality that we focus today on the power of Pentecost. Like I said, my message this morning is titled Receiving the Power of of Pentecost. And uh, I have four aspects of receiving God's power for us today. As we know, the Pentecost, it is a Christian, Pentecost, sorry, it is a Christian festival celebrated on the seventh Sunday after Easter. And it is a time uh, of commemorating the descent of the Holy Spirit 
when the power of God came on the people. So let's go to the first aspect of receiving God's power. It is quite straightforward. Jesus gave it in his last words to his disciples. As I have read earlier on, which is taken from Acts chapter 1 verse 8, but you will receive the power as the Holy Spirit comes upon you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. So the power that the believers or the disciples received from the Holy Spirit, we can say they received courage, boldness, confidence, the ability, the insight, and the authority. And they needed this to be able to complete the mission. And believers in Jesus Christ, this morning, if you're a believer, you can also receive the same power. The good news was going to be spread geographically in Judea, in Jerusalem, and also to the ends of the earth. As Matthew 28 verses 19 and 20 commissioned us to take the gospel to the other nations, and we needed to do that by having the same power that the disciples were promised. The apostles, they also received this power when they were waiting in the upper room, as we can read in Acts chapter 2. And the same promise that was given from his book, the prophet Joel, chapter 2 verse 28, that reads, And it shall come to pass afterwards that I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. And this was fulfilled when it was written in the book of Acts, chapter 2, verse 15 to 17. And it reads, For these people are not drunk, as you suppose, since it is the only third hour of the day, which is 9 a.m. in the morning. But this is what was uttered through the prophet Joel. And in the last days it shall be, God declares that I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. Joel's prophecy was fulfilled on the day of Pentecost. And guess what? The church was born. The Holy Spirit indwells all flesh. And if you're a believer this morning, like I said, this power is for you as well. So the first aspect is the promise. God said it, we believe it, and that settles it. Our second aspect that I'm that I can that I bring into this morning is the posture. The posture of Pentecost in receiving God's power. The attitude or your position, our stance, our state and anticipation. How is our posture? Are we ready to receive God's power? Acts chapter 1 verse 14 says, they all, they all join together constantly in prayer along with the women and Mary the mother of Jesus and with his brothers. And Acts chapter 2 verse 1 says, when the day of Pentecost came, they were all together in one place. In another translation, it reads, they were all in one accord. They had a mutual consent, being in agreement, a group unity, one mind and one purpose. They can, there can, be, can never be a substitute for Christian community. So the four postures that I bring to us this morning is being in one accord. Church, we need each other. We need other brothers and sisters. In God, there is no Lone Ranger basis. So the first one is being in one accord. The second posture is having the spirit of prayer. In time alone, in this pandemic season or in this lockdown, we can step up our prayer time on our own, alone and corporately. 
to receive the divine energy uh, through the Holy Spirit. And thank God that this is happening. Our covenant keepers have initiated the prayers in the morning. Thank you. And thirdly, when you take up scriptures seriously, the Word of God says the 120 followers, they had their posture of receptivity, the attitude to receive God's uh, Peter's teaching as he expounded on the Old Testament. And in the New Testament, it was preserved, the Holy Spirit preserved the scriptures for everyone to know God's will. And the fourth posture is when they were waiting with expectation for God to act. Yes, a lot of times we do not have the, the patience to wait. And we are living in this time of uh, instant uh, gratification. A lot of times we have this blame game. Whatever we are faced with, we are so quick in blaming God for what we are faced with. So my question this morning for all of us is, is your posture a, a posture of one accord on a regular basis with others? Or are you taking that time to be on your own in this lockdown there there's a lot of avenues that you can have um, a one accord attitude through our virtual meet our prayer meetings at uh, 4 30 in the morning a live stream and also our virtual bible studies take advantage of that family and secondly is yours a posture of prayer are you in a prayer when things are not happening your way? And is yours a posture of having uh, a Bible open daily, personally, in meditation? And are you involving yourself in a corporate teaching environment? There's a lot of things that's available online. Even though we are on lockdown, you can go online. And is your, lastly, is your posture a posture of waiting with expectation, trusting in God alone, no matter what. I can assure you, if you are in other posture, they can quench the presence of God for you to receive the fullness of God's power. The third aspect that, that I can bring to us this morning is uh, the picture of Pentecost with the people receiving God's power. And Luke has painted this perfectly in Acts chapter 2, verse 2 to 13. And it reads, Suddenly a sound like a blowing of a violent wind came from heaven and filled the whole house where they were sitting. They saw what seemed to be tongues of fire that separated and came to rest on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit enabled them. So the first picture that Luke has painted to us is the blowing of a violent wind. God-fearing Jews from other nations, the Bible says that they were in bewilderment. And that word is big. It simply means they were confused. They panicked. They were puzzled when they saw the disciples speaking in their own language. The disciples were made fun of because they were told that they were having too much wine. But it was the Holy Spirit filling them. And the people had the impression that they were drunk. You know what? The Hebrew word for spirit and wind is ruach the breath of Ruach and that same spirit is working in us today. If you're a believer, it is avail available for you. Hallelujah. And in creation, the same spirit was at work with God. Also, we can see uh, the same spirit or the, the same power at work in Ezekiel, in the Valley of Dry Bones, 
when this dry bone skeleton came to life. And likewise, uh, when Jesus was telling Nicodemus about how to be born again. So with God, the wind or the strong, violent wind was blowing in the upper room. It was an irresistible force, new thought, new energy, new creativity and new emotions with a new vitality was seen in the disciples. God wanted that, the newness, new things happening in the church and the result of that was having a church born. The second picture is the tongues of fire. They were also part of the picture that Luke was trying to paint for us to have a look, to have to see. In Acts chapter 2 verse 2 you can read in there that they saw the tongues of fire. You know the fire of the Holy Spirit it burns. They can burn and refine and melt whatever is in our life this morning if you allow the Spirit of God or the tongues of fire, the power of God to be at work in us and it will enable us to love uncondition, unconditionally, love unconditionally. We will be giving more to those who need it and it will also move us to be more forgiving. The third picture that Luke painted for us to be able to see to receive God's power is a speaking in tongues. In verse 4, the Holy Spirit has given the ability for them to speak in other languages. All nationalities recognized their own language. The question is, would the picture of wind, fire and tongues be relevant for us today? That is for you to answer. And lastly, let's look at the last aspect of receiving God's power, the practice. Luke shows us four pictures of a living Holy Spirit filled church and that's taken from Acts chapter 2 verses 42 to 47. They devoted themselves to the apostles, teaching and to the fellowship, to the breaking of bread and to prayer. Everyone was filled with awe and many wonders and miraculous signs were done. Selling their possessions and goods, they gave to anyone as they had need. Every day they continued to meet together in the temple courts. They broke bread in their homes and ate together with glad and sincere hearts, praising God and enjoying the favor of all of the people. And I love the last verse that says, And the Lord added to their number daily to those who were being saved. So the people devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching. Seriously. Today, we don't have any apostles, but we do have their teachings. The Old Testament prophetic teachings is recorded in the Bible and it's readily available to us. So the four practices of the church were, it was the learning church. The apostles, they were devoted <clears throat> and serious teaching. And the, the people devoted themselves to the apostles teaching. Today we don't have the apostles, but we have their teachings where we can read and follow. Second, it was a caring church. There was, they had fellowship. They came together intimately in groups. They sold and shared their possessions. Everything they had was God's. They even helped the poor people inside the church and outside of the church. There was an awareness that there was a poverty line, one-fifth to one-sixth of a poverty line was in the world. And for those of you who are carrying the people who have lost their jobs, reduced hours, thank you for reaching out to them. We are here 
in the business of people, looking after people. Like John Maxwell said, if you don't really value people, we might as well close the church and go home. Thirdly, it was a worshipping church. The early church met regularly, breaking bread, the Bible says, and praying together. Formally, they worshipped in church and informally at home. So it was a worshipping church. And lastly, it was an evangelizing church. They nourished the believers with balanced teachings, a call for repentance and faith. Baptism was practiced as well. And as a result, in verse 47, like I said, the Lord added to their number daily those to be saved. So evangelism must be central to us all. We need to share our faith individually and corporately. A healthy church, you will agree with me, is a growing church. The question is, is our church attracting others to Christ? I know a lot of churches, even Life Church, has a strategy to increase our membership. Yet we neglect to follow the practices that the early church practiced. The early church may not be perfect, but it is a good church to model or to follow. In conclusion, going through the four aspects of receiving God's power, let me ask you the same question that I asked earlier on. Which celebration would you want to forego now or feel it's unimportant? Is it Christmas, Good Friday, Resurrection Sunday, or still Pentecost. I know a lot of people have Pentecost down as your answer. But guess what? In incarnation, God came in human form. In crucifixion, He died for the sins of the world. And in resurrection, He triumphed over sin and death. Even so, in Pentecost, He empowers you and me and His universal church to live in glory, to continue his work until he returns. Satan thought he had accomplished a good work, that his work was done when Jesus died, but he was wrong. Something caught his attention. He looked on the day of Pentecost and he saw there were more Jesus that he could see. The power fell on the people on the day of Pentecost and he was scared to death when he saw what he saw. This is the same power that raised Jesus. The same power that healed a man that the Bible says he could not walk for more than 40 years. And he is availing his power, the same power to all flesh, as we read in the Bible. Romans 8, 11 says, All those who put their faith in Jesus Christ was immediately and permanently indwelt by the Holy Spirit. His power leads us, convicts us, teaches us, and equips us to do His work and spread the gospel. The Holy Spirit is the greatest and amazing gift of all to the church today. You can receive the power of God and it's available, available to each one of us. And as we conclude, please pray with me this morning. Holy Spirit, fall afresh on me. I open the door of my heart to you today. Take your permanent residence in my heart. Fill me with your power. Give me the boldness to be your witness to the lost. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. Heavenly Father, we thank you. Thank you for your living word that has been expounded. Thank you, Father, for giving us the strength 
to be able to know, O oh God, that your spirit lives in us, O oh God. Father, we take this time just to honor your name. Thank you, Lord, for giving us the enlightenment. Yes, Lord, to be directed the way you want us to live, to know your will and your purpose in our lives today. We commit this time to you, Father. Thank you for your children who are tuning in online, O oh God. I commit their lives to you, Heavenly Father, and declare your blood over them. Thank you that you will empower them with your Holy Spirit, giving them the power to be able to be strengthened, O oh God. And whatever we are going through uh, in this day and age, the pandemic season, thank you, Heavenly Father, that you will strengthen them. Holy Spirit, be with them, comfort them, give them, O oh God, the knowledge that you are always there with them. Yes, Father, thank you for your word of promises that says, you will never leave us nor forsake us. Father, I pray, those who are sick in body, I pray, Father, that your blood be upon them, that you will heal them, O oh God, strengthen them, and they will only look to you and you alone. Those who are going through issues of life, Father, we pray, I pray, Father, this morning that you will reach out and touch them in a very special way. Thank you that we are able to commune to you, O oh God, that you are our source of everything. Thank you that you are the healer of our life, O oh God. You are there to be uh, with us every time and every other day, Lord, as we live on in these last days and age. Father, we commit this time to you and pray, Lord, that you will strengthen us. Pray for the families who are tuning in, the Life Church family. Declare your blood upon them, O God, and pray that you will fill us with your Holy Spirit as well to be empowered and to be strengthened in this time, difficult times that we are going through. Those who are going through difficulties, O God, I pray, Lord, that you will comfort them. You will be with them, Father, this in this time, O God. We thank you, Lord, that we can um, meet and fellowship, O God, online. Uh, despite the lockdown, we can still feel your power, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord, that you can reach out and touch us in a very special way. We pray and commit all these things in no other name, in, but in Jesus Christ's name, we pray and we all say, Amen and Amen and Amen. Before I pray for our offering this morning, we want to acknowledge all our life family uh, church members. Thank you for your giving and even all our friends and families that are viewing online that also partner in your giving to our fellowship. We pray that the Lord would bless you in your giving as you have worshipped him through your offering this morning. Let us pray. Lord, we thank you, Father, for our tithes and offerings. We thank you for every members of the Life Church and even our friends, partners that have given this morning. We speak blessings over them. We pray you multiply their finances, Lord, and we pray you bless them in every areas of their life. Thank you, Lord Jesus, that you were the one who provides for us, Jehovah Jireh, our provider. 
Thank you for the gift of life and thank you for the gift of fellowship this morning. And thank you that we can worship you all together through our giving, through our tithes and offering this morning. We give you all the glory and the honor. In your precious name we pray. Amen. Thank you. And now we're going to take a look at our announcements of the week. Good morning and bulavinaka to you all Life Church and to all those tuning in through live stream. Proverbs 3 verse 5 to 6. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and do not lean on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge Him and He will make straight your paths. We trust that you have had a blessed encounter with our Lord Jesus Christ. These are your announcements for the week. Monday is dedicated to our family night. With the current lockdown in Suva and Nosori, this is a special time, an opportunity to lock down with your loved ones in prayer and sharing the goodness of God. To overcome, we must first succumb to our Lord. James 4 verse 10 Humble yourselves before the Lord and He will exalt you. On Tuesday, the Women of Purpose continues with their virtual Bible study, Battlefield of the Mind, via Zoom from 7 to 8 p.m. Your facilitator for this week is Pastor Kathy Kumar. We invite all the ladies to tune in for a mind-blowing experience of hearing God's Word and to engage in a powerful discussion to strengthen the mind, heart and soul. Wednesday is devoted to our Life Church prayer and fasting. We encourage each other to set aside time to withhold whatever we may be able to go without for a part of the day and to seek God through prayer. Our beloved nation is going through a time where it needs all the help it can get. We may not be able to help physically, but we can do so spiritually. Let us make it happen come this Wednesday for our nation and for our people. Our second announcement for Wednesday is for our awesome word keepers, doers of the word, classes three to eight. Your awesome Zoom session continues beginning at 10 a.m. with your awesome teacher. Your holiday is getting a lot of awesomeness because our God is an awesome God. Later in the evening at approximately 6.45 p.m., our mighty man of God, the King's Man, will have a virtual meet via Zoom to continue to be filled with wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. On Friday, the T4J, or Teens for Jesus, will have their virtual meet via Zoom at 7 p.m. From learning how to cook with special guest chefs to having inspirational discussions, each week brings a new blessing. What's up, people? If you're tuning in and you're team, this is especially for you. And this week's Team for J announcements is... Do 30 sit-ups every day. Yeah, you heard right. This week, we're going to take a deeper dive into the i curriculum and study the value of commitment. I hope to see you at 7 to 8 next Friday and online. Have a blessed week ahead. Covenant Keepers, your virtual meet via Zoom is at 7 p.m. This session is open to all couples and to those who wish to become a couple in the near future. To have a strong and healthy relationship, you need a strong and healthy foundation. And what better way is there to have your foundation enforced and strengthened by God. Please be reminded that the Covenant Keepers virtual prayer meeting has been extended to the 21st of this month and continues at 4.30 a.m. All are welcome to join in prayer. For more information, please contact the new Matawiwamas. The Kingdom Seekers, you have a virtual meet via Zoom and all members are requested to contact one of the link leaders below if you have not been assigned a group or should you wish to gather further details on your meet.
Hola Life Church Young Adults, I just want to quickly pop on here to say a big thank you to all of those who have attended the Kingdom Seekers sessions in the past couple of weeks. We have just completed our I Choose Leadership program, which was facilitated by Pastor Kathy Kuma. We learned about 16 important values that help with our leadership and learning the best way possible to serve for the extension of his kingdom. This week, we will be jumping into our links sessions and you might be asking, what are links groups? Links groups are simply small groups of KS members that do life together and work towards the common goal of winning souls for Christ. If you don't have a group yet, please come contact me or one of the Links leaders, Georgia Theresa Mesulame, Tima Mbale, or Georgia Rem. We can't wait to fellowship with you this week as we touch on the armor of God and will join us so that we can have heart-to-heart -heart conversations around why it is so important to be fully equipped with the armor of God, especially at a time like this. We can't wait to fellowship with you all. Have a blessed week. Due to the current restrictions in place, our Saturday sunrise prayer has been put on hold till further notice. However, you are encouraged to pray from home as we continue to intercede for our beloved nation. We also would like to plead with you to pray for the current conflict in the Middle East and that they may find a peaceful resolution. Life Church would like to thank you for your generous heart of giving. During these difficult times, we sincerely thank and acknowledge all those who continue to give to the extension of God's kingdom through your tithes, your offerings, missions, Jews first, and so on. For those that wish to have their tithes or offerings collected, please contact any of the people listed on the screen. As we support in the battle against COVID, we kindly request Life Church members to adhere to all safety precautions and restrictions given out by the Ministry of Health. Let us continue to stay safe and keep the faith. For more information about our weekly programs or church membership, please send us an email to the address on the screen. Please check out our social media channels to stay connected with all the weekly updates. Proverbs 18 verse 10 The name of the Lord is a fortified tower. The righteous run to it and are safe. Stay safe, stay connected, and have a blessed week.
time with us this morning. We pray the Lord will bless you in a very special way. And even as the word was preached, we hope that it has encouraged you and uplifted your spirit as you go through the week, that you would look to the Lord, who is your rock, your salvation, your helper this morning. Let us pray. Lord, we thank you that as we conclude our worship this morning, we want to give you glory. We want to exalt you, Lord Jesus, and say, God, you are good. You are faithful. Thank you for ministering to us this morning. Thank you for encouraging our spirit. Thank you for giving us hope. Thank you for giving us strength. Thank you for the word of God that have been preached. Thank you for this time of worship together as a family and believers in you. Lord, we thank you that even as we go through the week, we continue to look to you. As your word says in Psalms 121, I lift up my eyes to the mountain where my help comes from. Father, we love you. And we thank you that you are with us and you will be with us in our families as we go through this week, knowing that nothing we will go through, we will go through it alone because you are Emmanuel, the God who is with us. We thank you and we praise you in your matchless and wonderful name we pray. Amen.
Bunny and the Kingsman. Oh, wow. Thank you, Kingsman. God bless you. May you live longer than the usual. <laughs> Hi, Mom. You are special. Thank you. Oh. Take care. <laughs> so glad. <laughs> Thank you so much. <laughs> okay. Bye. Thank, Thank you. you. Naka. See you. All right. Thank you so much. Thank you. Just another this just a little something from the Kingsman. Awesome. Just to appreciate you for all that you do for your family and being a mother. So on behalf of uh, the Kingsman, just a little uh Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Happy Mother's Day. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you.